In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to create tiling textures using Blockbench. I'm going to start by creating a generic project. You could use any product type, but generics are really good for this, so just confirm there. Don't touch anything else. Now we're going to zoom out a bit and then click on Add New Cube. And there we go. Now I'm going to set the size of this cube to 16 by 16, standard size for a Minecraft block. By personal preference, I like to have things centered in my workspace. I'm just going to pull the cube over there. And then I'm going to move over to the left hand side of my screen and click on create new texture. Click that and then set the type to blank. Blank makes it so that the sides of my cube are all using the same texture and I don't have anything mapped out individually. I'm going to take this texture and pull and drag and let it go over my cube. As you see, it was added now to my cube here in the middle of my workspace. Ctrl D allows me to copy out a new cube and I can copy another one by Ctrl D again and then pull them out. Holding control allows me to drag and select, and then I can just copy and move that out. Do that again. Control D, drag out, and then hold control. Control D, and then drag out. Now I have a good eight grid square sets here. Gotta remove the corners so I can see what the texture does according there. And then either use control and drag, or click the bottom one, hold shift and click the top one to select everything in between. Now there's an extended menu right here. Click on that and you will see the option to lock these cubes. I'm gonna do that because now I can't click any of them. I'm clicking frenetically and there's nothing happening, but I can select the main cube. Can't select the other ones on the side though. That's great. Now in this next step, I'm gonna show you just how powerful this technique is. I'm gonna go into the paint tab up to the right and then I like to start with a gray color. Now I'm gonna select the paint bucket tool and then click on one of the sides. Notice how it applies to gray to every cube in our workspace, but here comes the really cool part. I'm going to take a red color so you can see this clearly, and then pull a line and see how it applies to all of the cubes in the same space. Now you can start to imagine how effective this is. Whether you are a professional or just an aspiring texture artist, this method is both fast and it's also really rewarding because you can see everything in real time, regardless of the scale you want to work at. And speaking of real time, let's create a pair of bricks together. We're going to work with this cube that has a bluer shadow area and a slightly more red toned highlight. And if I have the pencil selected, I can just use the pipette tool by left clicking or while holding Alt, which is going to allow me to select the color that I'm currently hovering. You can do the same thing, just follow along here and paint a highlight and a shadow in the same way and you'll achieve the very same effect as the ones I have here on my left hand side. Now, let's split this apart a bit and follow the same rule again. The shadow at the bottom, the slightly darker shadow at the furthest end, and then clean up all of the corners, add the second highest light and then the highlight, remove up in the corners there. And now we split this apart so we have achieved a full brick system. Of course you'll notice that this does not really tile, so what about making it tile? Would you want to make it tile? What about splitting apart and actually having this connect on the sides? Well it's pretty straightforward. You just take this out, paint the lines across accordingly, remove everything in this space and paint the lines across accordingly here. Second darkest and darkest color and then second darkest and then we zoom out. And now we have created what is called a tiling texture. You can't really tell where the edge of the block is, because in a sense, it could be any of these blocks, right? But bricks are the easiest blocks when it comes to creating this type of pattern. How about a more organic visuals, like cobblestone? Cobblestone is supposed to look like just rubble, right? And this requires a slightly different technique. The way we're going to do this is by really utilizing the 3D space here to get a good idea of how everything looks. So on this cube, I'm starting to paint a line and you'll see how this line continues on all of the other sides. Now I can continue painting on that side and you'll see how it continues on the first hand side as well. When we now continue to pull our lines, we can go across the entire 3D space to more effectively allow us to get a good idea of what the block is going to look like, but also paint it in a much more natural manner. Since if we're painting on what the cube is going to look like in the end, we have a much better idea of how the texture is going to behave in game. Now, the benefit of this is that as I'm zooming out, I can get a full idea of how this is going to tile. And you can see already that the pattern, even though there is one, has this organic cobblestone effect to it as opposed to looking like bricks with very sharp edges. We've made a bunch of little small circles that all line up. For highlights and shadows, I'm going to be applying shadow on one side of these circles and then the highlight on the other one. The lower corner is going to be my shadow on the lower right hand and the upper left hand is going to be my highlights. I'm going to pick a quite very bright color as opposed to what you're looking at, right? It almost pops out a bit and feels a bit unnatural. We're going to blend that in with the in-between gradient to that in the middle color of our little areas. 
And then I'm going to pick a slightly mid-between here as well, just to get them all across. There we go. I think I kind of like that. Look at what this is like. Now, of course, I want to bring out the lines in between as well. So I'm going to pick a slightly darker color and then just push out a bit. And one thing that's also really good about 3D space is that I can zoom out every once in a while to get an idea for what this looks like in a larger perspective so that I'm not blinding myself thinking that this close version of the cobblestone is what it's going to look like in game. Now, I think I really personally like this. We'll take a look and zoom out. Yep. Here you go, you have some crevasses in between, you have the highlights and the sections. I really think these stones are lining up pretty nicely. Might do a tweak or two to them, but all in all, let's apply them to a texture pack and see them in Minecraft. Oh yeah, don't forget to save your texture, clicking on this button right here. And here we go, regular cobblestone and our new version. Let's see them next to another as well. Here we have cobble on the left and our new on the right. Now, I do have a tutorial on the channel on how to actually build your own texture packs. You can feel free to check that out whenever. Leave a like and subscribe on this video if you enjoyed and learned something new. And if you have any cool ideas for textures you want me to make, let me know in the comments down below, because I would like to make a full video on making your crazy texture ideas.